We have the honor of having with us today David Stokes, Director of Development for Show Me Institute yes. uh, in Missouri. Yes, it's the whole state, it, it, but of right. course handles St. Louis as well. And you're actually based here in St. Louis, is that right? We are. Our, our home base is here in St. Louis. We have a, an office in Kansas City as well. And we cover free market public policy issues around the state, at the state, and at the local level. Oh, now, come on. You, it's much more fun than that. <laughs> <laughs> but do you consider yourself lobbyists? No, we are not. You, do and you lobby, though? We do not. Okay. We're a 501c3 charity. Yeah. So we are a, a public charity. And, and because of that, when we release papers or testify before bodies, uh, before legislatures, there are strict rules we have to follow. We can never come on this show or go before a legislative body and say, vote for bill number 12. You you can don't vote for, don't vote for that. You have to say he says that with resonance. Yeah, with resonance. That's what we cannot do. Yes, okay. yes. No, we're there to talk about what's good public policy for cities, counties, school districts, and the state here. And every so, time we phrase it, we talk about it from the perspective of policy and not politics. Yeah, I know on your website you have uh, um, a thing about corporate welfare on there, and it's very obvious, very quickly, that you're looking out for the people of Missouri when it comes to corporate welfare. For example, the Building a stadium for the Rams yeah, here in St. Louis. I think Louis. He, they're, they're fabulous, yeah. and they're looking out for everybody. And it makes me wonder, how did this happen? And you have an office, and you have funding, and it's just so, like... It is amazing. It's, yeah. it's quite how a website. Yeah, how do you even exist? <laughs> well, we, we exist because we have, we have hundreds and hundreds of generous donors around the state. And that's... Large donors, mid-sized donors, and small donors who want to support a, a free market organization that's not beholden to... To, to special he, interests, exactly, I would, I would exactly, say. not biased. Well, let's look at a real life example. Uh, last fall, last year, Uber uh, was introduced to St. Louis, and there was some controversy there because the taxi cab drivers, of course, really don't appreciate that kind of competition. Where Uber wasn't playing by the same rules. Now, where do you guys work with something like that? Well, we we absolutely believe that the taxi cab industry in Missouri, and particularly in the two big cities, St. Louis and Kansas City is overly regulated. We think the Taxi Cab Commission goes way too far in regulating taxis in St. Louis. Now, now the only the good thing I'll say about them is that it, it used to be worse until about a decade ago we had the St. Louis City Taxi Cab Commission and the St. Louis County Taxi Cab Commission and they were both terrible. <laughs> and now, so it's better now to have only one bad regulatory body instead of two. Well, what do we at have at the state now, level on that? Well, there's nothing at the state level. It's something that's licensed locally. That, but there is a, a, a bill, right? A 351 there, that's, that was introduced into the House? There is now a bill to address the fact that cities yeah. like St. Louis are keeping Uber and Lyft and other sort of app-based ride-sharing companies out. And that bill would be to create a state license, a simplified state licensing system that would trump local licensing. And while okay. it's unfortunate we have to come to that, I would prefer not... That not well, being sure, necessary, yeah. I do think it is still a good a good idea because what we're seeing in St. Louis and other cities is, in this state is an attempt to keep out yes, these new technologically yes. based transportation companies. And what is that? I mean, same thing with the Tesla, the car coming in and wanting to sell, and I I see them lobbying down in um, at the state in uh, Jefferson City. Jefferson City. Uh, what's going on? I mean, it's like we're smug and complacent. And we don't want anybody to come in and do anything, and we just want to keep everything for us. And that doesn't help. That doesn't help us grow. <laughs> I, I couldn't have said it any better than that. <laughs> right. No, you could have, but that's okay. <laughs> the proposal last year on Tesla was a proposal introduced by supporters of the car dealers to require Tesla to use car dealers like other car, like other car manufacturers in Missouri. The problem is that other car manufacturers have chosen to use car dealers, and thereby they're governed by the state's franchise law. Right. But there's nothing in that law that says Tesla is should be required exactly. to right. use a but, car dealer if they right. don't want to, and that was completely inappropriate. Luckily, the legislature didn't pass it. Unfortunately, the car dealers are now suing the state trying to force that. I did not write down the uh, on my sheet here the uh, address of Show Me Institute, the website address. Can you give it to us? Oh, I'd be delighted to. would like to see it. We've got a lot of writings up. We've got op-eds. We've got uh, some testimony on the taxicab licensing issue at showmeinstitute.org. That would we, be under red tape 
on, on your I think right, it would yeah. be under red tape, yeah. absolutely. We've got a number of headings, but there's also a search function. It's easy to find. We blog about it all the time at our blog, showmedaily.org, and various Show Me Institute policy people, particularly Joe Miller, who covers this area well for us. You can follow us on Twitter, too, at Show Me. And, and we, this is an issue that we talk about a lot because it's an issue of regulation that the ordinary Missourian, the average St. Louisan, understands. Everybody's ridden in a cab. Everybody realizes that, yes, you want the state to maybe require that background check and that that car gets inspected every 10,000 miles or, yeah, or so. Right, yeah, but to go beyond what we have with uniforms for drivers, mandated pricing schedules so that we should have price flexibility. Exactly. On New Year's and Mardi Gras, demand increases. You should be able to charge more so that more people will provide the service so that people can get a cab on New Year's Eve in this town. Well, you just named the two times of the year that people <laughs> use cabs in St. Louis, <laughs> other than maybe going now, to the airport. Wait, Ron, <laughs> if you were in uh, 20-something, you would be using the cab just about that, that's just it. And, and I mean, that's the whole point to me to Uber and Lyft is they appeal to a younger generation. Well, David course. Stokes, thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope you'll come back. Yes. Ron and Joy, thank you so much. I'm delighted to be on, on STL with you, and thank you for having me on. And I just love your organization, so I'm so glad to give it some, some more exposure. You can catch David, by the way, on uh, KTRS with uh, McGraw-Millhaven yes. on uh, 835 on Monday mornings, I think it is, isn't it? Absolutely. There thank you, you very much. Today's segment is made possible through the generosity of Dr. Matt Bays, MD, with Blue Tail Medical Group here in St. Louis. Blue Tail Medical Group specializes in regenerative non-surgical therapies. If you're a candidate for regenerative therapy, request an appointment online at bluetailmedicalgroup.com. 